Hi, hello and welcome again, Micro Hunter here. Well, these here are growing bubbles of carbon dioxide gas, and uh, that's basically the topic of today's video. I would like uh, to show you how you too are able to make those uh, growing carbon dioxide bubbles. And these are actually the cells that you need. These are just uh, regular yeast cells, baker's yeast, so pretty much uh, um, every household has those. And uh, when you prepare the yeast uh, with uh, some sugar and some water, and when you put it under the microscope, then you're able to see that the yeast starts uh, to respire, the sugar is used to make um, carbon dioxide. And this is basically what we see here. And that's actually also the reason why we add yeast uh, to bread uh, uh, in order to cause it to raise. So the bread is fluffy and cake is fluffy because of the carbon dioxide gas that was uh, produced by the yeast cells. And here we have uh, yeah, a single growing carbon dioxide bubble. And yeah, this is in time lapse. So about 10 times, 20 times faster than in real life. And uh, quite interesting. Look, uh, can you see how the expanding bubble actually pushes the yeast cell uh, aside, yeah, it's uh, quite quite nice. Uh, so you see the yeast is uh, actively respiring and very active. And here you can see that there are actually three um, carbon dioxide uh, bubbles. Yeah. By the way, in the in the second part of the video, I'm going to show you how you can actually prepare the yeast. Yeah. Here again, a little bit slower. And um, I'm going to pause this, this now. I would like to show you something else here with the arrow. Um, do you actually see here on the, on the side of the bubble? It's it's a little bit darker. Um, yeah. These are essentially the yeast cells that are pushed um, ahead. Yeah. So as the uh, CO2 bubble, as the carbon dioxide bubble expands, it pushes um, the yeast cells uh, outwards and they start to accumulate here, right, um, outside of the bubble. And uh, when two bubbles, when they fuse together, when they join together, what they have, then uh, basically where they were before this, you also have a little bit of yeast now inside the bubble itself. So all of those little things here actually indicate that uh, two smaller bubbles have fused together. Okay, so let's let's move on a little bit here. Yeah, you can see that the, yeah, it starts to grow. And then when two bubbles touch, then they quickly fuse together. And then there's a little bit of yeast uh, left over um, left over in the center. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe look, uh, just uh, let's go back a little bit um, and have a look uh, over here. Yeah, just look, look at this part over here, right? Um, those two bubbles are going to fuse together. And then there's going to be a little bit of yeast uh, left in, in here. Yeah. So let's, yeah, just uh, watch this over here. Yeah, and in one tick, and, and here we go, okay? I hope you got the idea. Yeah, so what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to zoom in quite a bit, um, and here too, I'm going to uh, pause the video. Do you actually notice that the yeast cells are shaking a little bit? Well, that is because of so-called Brownian motion. That is the random motion of, of, of particles. But look uh, look at this yeast over here, for example, right? Uh, there are two cells and they're uh, together. And this one over here is significantly smaller than the other one over here. Um, you see something similar happening up here. Right, yeah. and uh, this is uh, because when yeast cells when they divide, uh, so you add a little bit of sugar to some yeast and some water, and then you wait for a few hours, then they will start to divide. And this uh, cell division of yeast is asymmetrical. So um, yeah, there will be one large cell and uh, one smaller cell. They have the same DNA, but uh, um, ultimately uh, is, it appears like a smaller cell grows out of a larger one. And this is uh, this type of cell division is referred to as budding. And then the smaller one will also grow in size. Maybe just like over here, yeah. Um, until both of the cells will have uh, pretty much the same size, and then um, the division process starts again. So a little bit in, in older in older cultures, when I say older, maybe in cultures that are a couple of hours old, um, then you're able to actually observe this uh, directly under the microscope as well. Yeah, and again here you are able to see a little bit the the vibration of the individual of the yeast cells because of Brownian motion. That's because of thermal activity of of, um, of the surrounding water. So what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm going to now show you um, a little bit how I prepared um, the yeast. So what I used is uh, dry yeast. Uh, of course, you can also use fresh yeast. It actually might uh, work faster, but dry yeast is fine as well. I added a little bit of sugar, approximately the same amount. Don't add too much. Uh, because otherwise uh, the yeast is not going to respire either. So too high of a concentration is not good. Add a little bit of water and then uh, give it a couple of minutes time for both sugar and the yeast to dissolve. What I did is I placed it uh, on a uh, coffee heater um, and it's around 40 degrees centigrade. A small drop goes on, on the microscope slide. Cover glass, of course, uh, goes on top. And just make sure that you have a very thin layer of, of uh, water here. Um, so if there's too much, you might use a pipette or some tissue paper to remove excess water. If you wait a little too long, 
long, uh, then it's going to start already making carbon dioxide in the little dish that you used for preparing this also fine. Yeah? And then uh, yeah, and then you basically put it under the microscope and uh, then you're able to see something like this here, right? Um, and uh, yeah, the rainbow colors are because of this uh, specific um, optics that I have. Uh, um, and uh, it also looks kind of neat this way. So that's it. I hope uh, that this video gave you again a little bit some, uh, yeah, possibilities to experiment around. I wish you all the best. Uh, do like and subscribe, okay? And uh, wish you all the best. Happy micro hunting. As always, see you around next time. Bye-bye.